Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Miller Time Devotion in my Subaru. Hey, as I film this video right now, my daughter is in labor. She's been in labor all night long, and that baby is coming any moment. And it reminded me of one of my favorite sections of Scripture, Romans chapter 8. Let me read part of it to you, starting from verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Notice what Paul is saying. He's comparing what we're going through now. He's comparing the pain, the suffering, the loss, the fear, the anxiety, the worry. He's comparing all of what we're facing now in our lives with something that is yet to come, that is better. And he's saying, no matter what your suffering is now, no matter how difficult it may be, it does not compare to the glory of of what is yet to come. He goes on and he says, for the creation, the world that we live in, the nature, waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. That's you and I. And that's others who have not yet placed their hope and trust in Christ. For creation, here's why it's broken. Here's why there is suffering and decay and disease. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. So what Paul is saying here is that even creation is suffering. Even nature is suffering, but it's not what was meant to be. But it is going to be fixed one day. And so there's this hope, there's this anticipation that we live with even in the midst of our present sufferings. I want you to pause for a second. Just think, what is your present condition? Where are you hurting? Is it loneliness? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Are you watching too much news? Are you scrolling through social media too much? You know, I learned a new word this week, doom scrolling. It's, it's that idea of just bad news after bad news after bad news after bad news as you scroll, scroll through your phone, as you flip through the channels. Doom scrolling. We live in a fallen, broken world, and that has been the case for every generation since the fall. But Paul is wanting us to have hope here. He's wanting us to live with the anticipation that something better, something more is yet to come. And that's where our hope lies. It is not in this world getting fixed. We do our best to live in this world, to help others, to serve others, to love others, knowing, though, that it will never get fixed. Paul goes on, and he says that we know, we know, we're certain of this, that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Paul uses this beautiful analogy of childbirth where there's labor, where there's pain, where there's difficulty, but there's that hope, that anticipation that that child will be here soon. And once that child is here, the pain and the suffering, it just, it's so minimized by the beauty and the glory of that child and being able to hold that child. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We groan inwardly as we wait, eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. It is going to get fixed one day. And so we live in this present life. We accept the present difficulties. We accept the present sufferings and loss. 
knowing deeply in our hearts that there is something better yet to come, that there is a glory and the present pain, the present sufferings will not compare. You know, one of my favorite quotes, you've heard me say it before. All the pain, all the suffering in this life is like one night in a bad hotel compared to the glory that is yet to come. Let me finish off this thought. For in this hope, Paul says, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. One of the most difficult things to do in the Christian life is to wait. To wait. And so I encourage you today, whatever pain or difficulty that you are facing today, whether it be loneliness, fear, anxiety, whether it be physical, financial, spiritual, whatever may be going on in your life, Put your hope in what is yet to come. Remind yourself that your present suffering, the labor pains that you currently feel, will not compare to the glory that is yet to come. So hold on to hope. Lean into it today. And as you do, may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds. Jesus. God bless you guys, and I will give you news soon. As soon as we hear about that little baby, I will let you know. God bless you all. See you next time.